Just before I go into the bigger rant, I just wanted to mention everyone was excited about the show when it was premiering and particularly the idea of a black man leading the show and a black single father. And to an extent, they did show the softer side of um, black men because there are a lot of stereotypes and a lot of um, negativity. And there was this whole deadbeat dad sort of stereotype that was around and they did a very good job of showing, you know, you know that was just, you know, crap. Um, but the character himself of Cisco was still this, compared to Picard, Picard was this very intellectual person who, you know, dealt with things that way, and Cisco was more belligerent, and it was sort of the counter to the good father, where he was this sort of belligerent, sort of um, an intellectual, like, the way he dealt with things was just like, he punched Q in the face, and Q never came back. Why? Because there was nothing interesting about his approach or how he did anything. It was just like, just dull and blunt. And I didn't think Avery Brooks was a great actor. Um, they, there were plenty of other black actors that I don't know why they didn't get, but they got him. And in person, I've heard from, from friends that he was, um, oh God, I can't go into that. But um, yeah, I, I'd never wanted to meet him. He's one of the few Star Trek stars I didn't want to meet. I wanted to meet, I wanted to meet you know, Lavar, I wanted to meet Nichelle, I wanted to meet um, Michael Dawn, I wanted to meet Anthony um, Montgomery. I meant all, so it's nothing to do with their colour. It was just he just wasn't very nice. He wasn't very good. And um, even though they really did a good job of dispelling the myths and stereotypes of one side of, you know, black masculinity, they really, really doubled down on the other side of it, which is really ugly and racist, I thought. So I think the show's a bit racist, frankly. Um, but just so far as the other actors' performances, before I get into the whole rant, I just want to make it clear, I think the actors did a great job. I think the writers did a good job of trying to depict this vision of Star Trek, which the problem was the vision, the, the intention was wrong. So I don't want to say quality-wise, because I say that at the end of the other video, I'm like, some people aren't going to stick very far if they think I'm actually trashing the show quality-wise. So I just want to say all that up front, and I'm just going to put it all together in one big rant, because... Whether anyone watches it or not, it just made me feel better to say it. It's been bothering me for a decade. Hello, Steve White, Trekboy89 for Steve Arts 89 Yes, it is the 30th anniversary of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I kind of missed this, because I always think of Star Trek Deep Space Nine as being a 1992 series. Why? Well, probably because on the back of all the DVDs in Australia, it had 1992 on them, because that's when the show was produced. And I think people expected it to air in 992, um, because Next Generation pre um, premiered in September of um, that year. But, uh, not that year, the year that it was released. And most TV shows would be released September, October, November. But um, they waited till January, so January 3rd, Star Trek Death Space 9 premiered. And I remember watching it for the first time on VHS, not on TV. Um, I got the rental version, which I bought my own copy of. Uh, which cost a fortune, but that's what you did back in the day. Um, and um, it was had gold and silver embossing on the cover. It looked very nice. And I remember hearing a review of it um, on the radio on the way home. And I wasn't sure what to think of this show because I love The Next Generation, but I hadn't seen a lot of The Next Generation. At that point, we'd had season one and two shown um, in one block for a whole year. And then they switched to a different channel. And I didn't see Next Generation again until video. Um, because I couldn't get that channel. So um, I loved Next Generation. I loved the, the Starship life, and the idea of being on a station on some level seemed more... Um, I don't know, I actually kind of liked the idea in theory. But then we didn't get a Starfleet station. We got a Cardassian station. And we got an ugly Cardassian station. And there was... It was designed to be ugly and uncomfortable. It was it was anti-Starfleet design. Nothing was ergonomic. Nothing was beautiful. Nothing was well lit. It was just dark and metallic and chunky. And or it was like um, um, like Las Vegas. It was garish and you know fluoro and just too much. So I I was never comfortable on the station. It was ugly. Hated it. Um, I missed the next. Uh, I missed the Enterprise. I missed the D. I missed the original Star Trek, you know, Enterprise. I just thought it was ugly. So that was my first and ongoing issue with DSS Nine. Whenever I think of watching it, I just suddenly have flashes of 
of orange and grey and, and fluoro lighting and I, and I can't do it. So that's one issue. Um, the other issue I think was that I didn't know this at the time, but I felt it. And a lot of Star Trek fans felt it. And we sort of have had it confirmed in interviews since that um, the guy who created Star Trek Deep Space Nine, for the most part, um, the real sort of... Um, the real push behind the show hated Star Trek. He hated Next Generation. He hated Gene Roddenberry. And he really wanted to create, like, the anti-Star Trek Star Trek. The one that, you know, real people could relate to. Because apparently the, 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 real, the real Star Trek was this silly little fantasy. And Gene Roddenberry, you know, and people who believed in his vision, they were just, you know, unrealistic, naive, sort of, I don't know what he thought of us, but he hated us. And he wanted to create this, 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 Star Trek, it was just like every other science fiction show. It was bitter and cynical and dark and just m stuck in politics and um, war and, you know, there was nothing to look forward to. It was just today, in the future, you know, on, on a space station or on, on, you know, dirty old ships and cargo ships and, you know, nothing beautiful, nothing you could want, nothing you could aspire to or, um, like, I wanted to live on the Enterprise. I never wanted to visit Star Trek Space Nine, like, ever. So, and then we realised, like I said later in interviews, that he really did hate the show and he really tried his best to make it the anti Deep Space Nine. And it's sort of the proto-discovery, if you look at it. Um, it's, it's everything that fans hate about Discovery, you know, was seeded in Deep Space Nine. It's all about war, it's all about religion, it's, you know, against Star Trek. It, 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 it portrays the Federation as evil. It created... Um, Section 31, which is basically saying, well, this, this vision, Starfleet, Starfleet, um, sorry, Starfleet, Star Trek's utopian, you know, future, none of this is realistic. You can't have that without this cynical, um, you know, the cynical idea that you can't have that without, you know, the maggers behind it. You have to have the, the maggers, you know, doing everything, you know, blowing everything up, you know, attacking everything, you know, um, you know, war crimes. You can't have can't have utopia without all of that. So it was a very cynical way of saying, you know, Star Trek's not realistic and, you know, it's just stupid and, you know, our show is, is, is real and you should like that because basically it's just like today but in the future. And a lot of people who didn't like Star Trek liked Deep Space Nine. A lot of people who liked other science fiction shows but didn't like Star Trek because they couldn't buy into the fantasy and the optimism and, and um, what they thought was lame, the lameness of Star Trek. They got into it, so there was a bit of a, a bit of a divide between original Star Trek fans, traditional Star Trek fans, Next Generation fans, and Deep Space Nine fans in the beginning. Because Deep Space Nine fans, a lot of the people who usually didn't like Star Trek but liked this, came in saying, "Well, this show's better. Your show's crap." And it was sort of like the Star Trek Star Wars, but not as bad because it was still, for the most part, the stories that, like, like you know, certain people kept reins on other certain people, and the show didn't go as far as he wanted it to. I'm not mentioning any names you may notice. But, um, so it, it was still Star Trek, but it's like the most negative, cynical, until they got to Section 31 in the war, it was, it was sort of like Star Trek, but just sort of a boring, dull, garish, stuck on a space station Star Trek. When we got the Defiant, it was kind of interesting because it was almost like Star Trek again. We were sort of going out into the, out into the universe and it almost felt like it was going forward for a second or two, but then they went to war. Like they just, you know, gave us ships to go to war, that's it because apparently they couldn't bring the war to Deep Space Nine, so they had to take ships to the war. Um, and then when we get to, you know, the war crimes, and um, Cisco's proud defiance of, you know, I will do whatever I want to protect, you know, whatever this is, whatever this, you know, I don't even know what to call it, because you can't call it the Star Trek dream, you can't call it Utopia, you can't call it the Federation... Um, Starfleet. It's just this ugly version of modern day politics. Um, I, I will kill for that and justify that. And, you know, it's, it's just, it just spits on Gene's vision, spits on Star Trek. I hate it now, which is surprising because at the time I didn't get, because I sort of had some of those views of Star Trek. I thought Star Trek was a bit, bit lame and I sort of wanted more action and things blowing up. I, I, you know, I was a kid. I didn't, you know, I wasn't very smart. Um, then I grew up and I appreciated what Gene created. I got, a, I got a bit of a taste of the real world and I wanted to believe things could be better and we could be better and I needed to believe in that future once I'd seen a few things. And Deep Space Nine kind of started to chip away at that and take that away. 
And then we ended up getting eventually, you know, Discovery and shows like that that really, 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 you know, hated Star Trek and really went so far away from that vision. And all the new, all the new Treks are about is, well, getting to that Star Trek future that we're not at. And they each talk about it. By the end of the season, they're, they're you know, you know um, talking about it and confirming that, yes, this is where we should be and how we should act and so forth. And then the start of the next season, it's all gone to crap again. And then they spend the whole next season getting back to what Star Trek should be and promising us to boldly go the next season, just like the J.J. films. Each the end of each film, they, they put us through you know, a horrible adventure on Earth, basically. And then at the end, said... Okay, now we've sort of fixed, sorted ourselves out. Now we start going to bold to go in the next movie. Come back and we'll bold to go next time. And then they go back to the same, um, you know, Earth scenario and terrorism and, you know, white actors and, you know, no, no interesting alien makeup, no worlds to explore, just current day politics stuff, normal, you know, audiences can relate to. They don't have to use their imagination or their um, anything to. So that's sort of what we got. And Deep Space Nine is where that began, because the original Star Trek was its own thing. It took a little while. The original vision in the cage was great, but then they sort of had to dumb it down a bit for TV, but then they sort of brought it back up for Next Gen. And then there was there was a backlash against Next Gen and the original Star Trek, and it's retro... Um, I don't want to say fantasy too much, because I don't really think of it as fantasy, but on some level it is. Um... There was a backlash against that, and that's what Deep Space Nine... Deep Space Nine was the backlash against Next Generation and the original Star Trek. Um, and it was a very cynical thing that non-Star Trek fans embraced. And, like I said, it was sort of the... the, the I was nearly going to say the foretelling, but... Um, yep, so you know where we ended up. And it's really sad, because we only got a couple of really good seasons of Next Generation before Gene died. And then it started to sort of be picked away at, and then Deep Space Nine was a complete slap in the face um, to Gene's dead body, and you know, Voyager sort of went backwards, they're like, no, we want to go back more to Next Generation, and I did like Voyager because it felt more like Next Gen, and the idea was, well, we've got Deep Space Nine for the fans who hate Star Trek, and we've got Voyager for the fans who love Next Gen, and it seemed to work, because I don't know, it seemed to work, but when you watch Deep Space Nine on its own, it's too dark, I can't do it. When I was watching Deep Space Nine one day, and then um, Voyager the next day, or Next Gen one day, and then Deep Space Nine the next day, you can kind of take it, if you watch them both at the same time, but you just watch Deep Space Nine on its own, it's dark, it's cynical, it's, it's horrific, it's dramatic, and I know it was well written for what it was intended to be, it's not bad writing, it's not bad quality, it's not badly produced, it's just not Star Trek, and it really didn't, you know, it didn't sort of announce itself so much in the beginning, it sort of slid it in there. And then um, looking back at it, it was really obvious. And when you condensed it and maybe watched a whole season, that was when I sort of realised just how dark it was and how much I didn't like it. And I tried marathoning the show a couple of years ago for the, for the 20th, 20th anniversary. I got to the third season of doing it each season. The idea was to do it each week that it originally um, aired. And um, I couldn't do it. I got to I got a couple of episodes into the third season and I'm just like I don't want to watch this show. I have better things to do. I don't want to watch this show, and I didn't finish. So that's where I left Deep Space Nine. I'm gonna leave this video here. Um, sorry I couldn't say anything good about the show. Um, it didn't do anything any, anything good. Um, Next Generation was doing well. Voyager did well for the most part. I mean it was a switch because. Um, it was on UPN, and it didn't have the same audience. It didn't have a bigger audience as um, DS9 and Next Gen was. So there was a drop in the ratings and perceived lack of popularity because less people watched UPN than watched it in syndication. And that started also the decline of Star Trek um, in some ways as well. And that happened after Deep Space Nine left syndication. So it was sort of the last sort of successful Star Trek in that level, but it wasn't anything to do with, you know, the artistic merits. It was purely a matter of... Um, politics and everything else which is why um enterprise was end up being cancelled anyway but I've, i'm going off into other things now um i'm gonna go for free to share like comment subscribe let me know what you think i know not everyone loves deep space nine i know some people love it they think it's great that's because they don't like star trek and they think somehow that's what star trek was supposed to be and that's the real star trek and these other shows are just stupid and fans of like that are just immature and you know you never hear deep space nine fans say anything good about stuff regular Star Trek fans and, you know, regular Star Trek. 
much like Discovery fans and, you know, New Trek fans or um, Drekkies or whatever you want to call them. They have nothing good to say about the original Star Trek um, or Star Trek fans in general. And it's the same dynamic. It just, it, that, this is where it started. This is where, you know, this is the beginning of the end. Star Trek Deep Space Nine was the beginning of the end of Star Trek being the great science fiction fantasy that it was. Um, I know a lot of pro-war MAGA people love the show and they'll defend it to the end because it has religion and war and, you know, evil terrorists and all this sort of, all these things that are very stereotypical, conventional, racist, pro-war American rubbish, trash, you know. Um, yeah, it's got everything, it's got nothing good about it. I mean, aside from the performances of some of the actors, Terry Farrell was amazing. Um... Uh, and he only said his real name. What, 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 God, what did he change his name to? Um, Siddig El Fadel. I can't, Fadel, I can't remember his real name. His name now. Um, he was great. Um, some of the actors were great. Some of the performances were great. I mean, um, Garrick was amazing. And we knew he was gay. I knew he was gay the first time he opened his mouth. And I'm like, oh, that's a gay character. Uh, but they didn't go for it because they didn't have the guts. You know, for all this, oh, we're going to give us give you know, the real world. We're going to give you gritty and realistic. They they couldn't even have a gay character. That's how uninspired and unoriginal the show really was. But um, yeah, this is just a bitch and a rant now. But um, whatever, I need it because I'm so tired of hearing people say how Deep Space Nine was the best Star Trek, and it's always non Star Trek fans who hate Star Trek. Just like it's you know the New Trek fans and Discovery fans who say that Star Trek is was sexist and stupid and immature and um, you know it was basically made for kids and you know it's like it's too bright and the sets look like they're made out of cardboard you know all that that sort of mentality of people that's the same sort of people who love Deep Space Nine but um, this is turning into a 15 minute video now when it wasn't planned to be it was meant to be a very short little five minute video but. Um, I'm really going to go this time. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the show. Do you think I'm being too harsh? Do you ha remember the reaction you had to it? Because at first I was okay with it. And it does take a while to get really to what the core of the show was, which was war and religion and ugliness. Um, it sort of eased us in and then slapped us around. Um, like a bad relationship. Um, and then we had to put up with it because we didn't have anything else for a little while. Um, but then we got Voyager. And it was kind of okay. And then it ended. We didn't have, didn't have to think about it again. But yeah, that's my 30th anniversary tribute to Deep Space Nine. Aside from some of the actors who I dearly love, like Terry Farrell, I have nothing good to say about the show, really. Really. Now, in fairness, there were a couple of good episodes of Deep Space Nine. And I literally mean a couple. Um, like two. Um, now, I tried to marathon the show, like I said. Um, I started watching Next Generation for the 20th anniversary each week on the date that was supposed to, that originally aired I would watch an episode and I tried to do the same with Deep Space Nine while I was doing Next Gen because they ran you know together and once Next Gen finished it was just Deep Space Nine I just couldn't do it um, because why would I want to why would I spend my time watching an episode of Deep Space Nine when I can watch Next Generation or the original Star Trek or the animated series or Voyager or Enterprise or um, Phase Two or continues, you know, there's all these actual good Star Trek shows, why would I watch, why would I waste my time watching Deep Space Nine when I can watch any one of those, so I just haven't watched it in a decade. But the only two good episodes are Duet, which was brilliant, I will give them that, and that was first season, um, I love that episode, I can watch that a million times, it makes me cry, um, and of course Trials and Tribulations, because they actually did a brilliant job of recreating the original Star Trek and putting the, the characters into that era and that's something everyone wanted to do and it's a pity they didn't do as good a job on Voyager because they didn't go as far with Voyager they they spent too much time on the Voyager story and um, how they went into um, you know the Excelsior and that wasn't as good but um yeah so those are the two good episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine and that's that's all I can give it and I sort of felt like well I've just spent 15 minutes trashing the show I should at least um, like I said, the actors are good. They all did a great job. Like I said, it's not a matter of quality that's being bad. I mean, the problem was the intention of the show was anti-Star Trek, and you can feel it. C certainly, once you're aware of it and conscious of it, you can see it everywhere. And I wasn't really aware of it when I watched it back in the day, and like I said, it was buffered between Next Generation and then Voyager, so you didn't feel it so much. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, the writers, they did a good job. The actors did a good job. They, they quality-wise, it's a quality production. It is Star Trek level, quality-wise. But um, the intention is wrong. It's, it's just got this nasty, nasty, dark little, you know, um, intention behind it all. And I just can't stomach it sometimes. So I'm going to go again. <laughs> um, I did a shorter video because I'm like, I just want to do a little short video. And then I sort of thought about this and I thought, well, you didn't mention the actual good show. So you should probably just add that onto that and just throw that up as like, you know, the long rant. Um, and maybe some other fan who hates Deep Space Nine or at least has some issues with it that no one else acknowledges, they can actually, you know, have some validation. Um, I should say the design of the, sh the station itself from the outside was beautiful. I'll give them that. And the initial artwork that we saw of that was amazing. It was just the inside and the feel of it. And they tried deliberately to make it sort of this alien, uncomfortable, unergonomic uh, you know, environment you wouldn't want to be in. And the voles and everything, just everything about it, like you didn't want to be there. And that was the main difference for me with, you know, the Enterprise and the next generation. I wanted to be there. I wanted to live in that world. It was a fantasy that I wanted to be real, that I want to come true one day. D Space Nine, no, just don't. But um, yeah, <laughs> I think I'm done.